Get ready to meet one of my favorite towns in all Malaysia. A visit to Malacca is like a journey into the past. This town is so incredibly rich in history. It's a cultural melting pot full of traditions, beautiful museums and delicious food. In this episode, I'm gonna guide you through this very beautiful town, showing you some of the best things that you must not miss out upon your next trip to Malacca. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel Demographic. If you like everything about traveling and culture, then make sure you subscribe to this channel now. Today I'm gonna present you Malacca, which is Malaysia's cultural and historical hub. I'm gonna start with the most famous place in town and that is the Red Square. The first thing that you're gonna see is the Christchurch, which was built during the Dutch colonial rule. Yes, you heard right, the Dutch used to be here. And before the Dutch, even the Portuguese came and they built the Alfamosa. You see all these rickshaws here? So they actually offer you a ride to go over to the Alfamosa and that is the remnants of this formerly Portuguese fort. Since you're here, you should also go up to the St. Paul Hill. If you're lucky, just like me here, you may even bump into Jack Sparrow who's gonna say welcome to this world. On top of the hill, you can see the ruins of the St. Paul's church. But hey, this is not just any random church you're looking at. In fact, you will be looking at the first ever church being built in Southeast Asia. So in conclusion, this is definitely a great place. In fact, it's one of the must-dos if you come to Malacca. Before I introduce you to the more exclusive places in town, I want to show you another must-see and that is the Malacca Straits Mosque. The best time to come here is after 6 p.m. so you can watch a beautiful sunset. I suggest right after you arrive here, you go a little bit on distance to the mosque to get a much better picture of it. Standing here, wouldn't you agree, isn't this just a great photo spot? I suggest you just wait here till 7 p.m. that's when the sun sets. After that, the mosque is being lit up in this beautiful green light here. After full darkness, I recommend you to return to Malacca town. There you should try some of the delicious foods in Jonka Walk. I would say no trip to Malacca is complete if you haven't visited at least one museum. This town is the birthplace of the Peranakan people, so it quite makes sense to explore their heritage. Peranakans or Babas and Yonyas are the offspring of Chinese traders who intermarried with local Malay women. There are two museums that bring you closer to their traditional lifestyle. The first one is the Baba and Yonya Museum. Unfortunately, here I can only show you this shot. But as you can see, the museum looks very inviting. The other one is the Straits Jewelry Museum, a traditional Peranakan house that has been open to the public. On the ground floor, you can explore the traditional lifestyle of these people Whereas on the second floor, you can see their rich collection of jewelries and traditional dresses. As you can see, their art is a mixture of Chinese, Malay, British and Portuguese. This is exactly what makes their heritage so unique. By the way, if you're interested to get to know more about the Peranakan people, in my next upcoming video about Penang, I'm gonna show you a museum that has an even much larger collection. The third museum that you should visit is the Flora de la Mar. It is built into this boat, which is a replica of the formerly pride Flora de la Mar, a legendary Portuguese ship. The museum brings you closer to the history of Malacca as an important center for trade. Because this town was located along the Spice Route, Malacca has been an important hub for traders around the world. Merchants from China, India, Portugal and Arabia used to come here to buy and sell goods. The latter people together with Indian Muslims have also introduced Islam to Malaysia. Being in Malacca, you should also go and check out the Jalan Tukang Emas, the street of the goldsmith, or also known as the street of harmony. There are a lot of things that you can discover around this area. Now this building here is interesting because this is actually one of the oldest mosques in all Malaysia. I quite like this place because it is very native in its architecture. You should also go and check out the interior, it's quite interesting. 
In this mosque you may recognize a lot of typical Malay, Sumatran, Chinese and even Indian elements. Because this is one of the most tourist friendly mosques in all Malaysia, you should at least come here for a quick visit. One of the major attractions along this street is the Cheng Hung Tang Temple. I highly recommend you to visit this temple as in my eyes it is one of the most beautiful ones in the entire city. Entering the main hall you can see it is very rich in ornaments. That's exactly why I like this place so much. Also don't forget to walk outside around the main prayer hall. There are a lot of things that you may discover around there. Just on the opposite side there is another temple from where you can enjoy a great view over the old city. There are a lot of interesting souvenir shops that you can find in this street. Beyond the Treasures is one of my favorite ones. In here you can buy a lot of masks and other traditional Asian and Chinese handcrafts. Another really chilling activity that I highly recommend to you is a cruise on the Malacca River. The tour starts quite frequently, to my knowledge, every 30 minutes. The boat ride takes about half an hour and it takes you through the old city all the way up to Kampung Morten. That place is a beautiful heritage village that consists of 100 traditional Malay houses. A lot of Southeast Asian people may know about this, but those who don't, Malacca is also very well known for its delicious cuisine. Since you're in this town, you definitely have to give a try to Peranakan food. It's quite an interesting cuisine as it combines Malay and Chinese dishes. Where to eat? Well, honestly, in the old city there are countless of really good restaurants. Just around Jonko Walk, for example, you can find a lot of restaurants where you can dine in a very traditional environment. Now one thing you have to get to know about my videos, I will mostly keep the very best things to the end. The really best place to visit in Malacca is the Jonker Walk. There's not much going on in this road during the day. However, after 4 p.m. things start to change. The road will be closed for cars and only open to pedestrians. After that time, you will see a lot of stalls opening up that sell traditional souvenirs and delicious street food. No doubt, this coconut ball stall is my favorite in town. This one here actually quite reminds me of a Turkish ice cream stall. That is because they serve with a coconut ball in a very unconventional way, throwing it multiple times up in the air, accompanied by a silat show. Besides trying out different kinds of street food, you should also go and check out some of the shops around here. You will see some of them have actually quite amazing interiors. One particular type of information you would always receive in my videos is when are the festivals. A good time to visit Malacca is about two weeks before Chinese New Year. During that time you can experience Malacca in a very festively atmosphere just like this here. Another good time to visit is during Ramadan. I'm sure during that time you will have a lot of delicacies that you can try on the night market. Before I end this video, I want to show you one more thing and that is a Malay Tanja. It is a traditional Malay headwear and as you can see it is full of these beautiful golden ornaments. Quite nice, right? So this is typically worn by grooms on Malay weddings. But if you also paid attention to my video, during the part with the coconut stalls, when those Malay guys were throwing the coconut ball up in the air, they were actually wearing this. You may think that's the right way of wearing it by keeping the tip to the front. However, Malay people don't wear the danja like that. In fact, they keep the tip slightly to the left, so that's the right way of wearing it. I also want to take this opportunity to wish to all my Malaysian, Singaporean and Brunei friends Selamat Hari Raya Aidil Fitri, Maaf Sahir Dan Batin. That is what people here usually say to Muslims to wish them a happy end of Ramadan. We've reached the end of this episode. 
I hope you've enjoyed watching it. And if you did, then please hit that subscribe button now. We're gonna see each other very soon. Stay tuned, next is Penang.